right, we're going to welcome everyone uh, into our Wednesday night uh, Bible study. From wherever you're joining us, uh, from around the world, welcome into our Wednesday night service. We are studying in Acts chapter number 17, the book of Acts chapter number 17. We are ready for verse number 6. Let's back up now, if we could, uh, please, into uh, verse number uh, 5. But the Jews, which believe not, moved with envy, uh, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. Now, Paul and Silas had been stirring up a lot of people. Now then, uh, they were after Jason and his household uh, because of the sake of the gospel. They were saying, and we're going to read this here in verse 6. Well, I'll just go ahead and read verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. And we talked about that as we were finishing up the other night. Uh, they were turning the world upside down. Now, how in the world were they turning the world upside down? They were turning their world upside down because uh, it was going against Jewish tradition. It was going against custom. They were telling about the King of the Jews, Jesus Christ, and not uh, teaching the Mosaic Law. And we're going to see here in just a moment how that they were claiming uh, that they were talking about a new king, not talking about Caesar, but a new king they were trying to lift up among the people. But the king that they were lifting up was the king of all the universe, not the king of, of, the, of the, uh, the kingdom there that they were living upon in the earth. That would have been such a small job uh, for the Lord, just to be the king of one little old country. Amen. But he was a king of glory, the Lord of lords and the king of kings. Isn't it amazing how that mankind looks at things the, in, in the small way? Everything that we look at, we look at things like, I know God can do anything. Well, he can do anything. But our anything is something small. <laughs> Amen. Because our mind cannot even wrap around the things that God has the ability to do. I've been serving him for over 35 years. And every now and then, I still get surprised at how big he is. And I know he's a big God. But he still, every now and then, surprises me because he appears to be even bigger than I ever could dream that he ever was and how much in charge that he is of my life and of your life and of everything that we face and we go through. Now, every one of us, when we're facing life, when we're looking at our money, we're looking at our health, we're looking at our relationship uh, things with family or whoever it may be, and we look at those situations and we say, trouble, trouble, disappointment, disappointment, problem, problem, trouble, trouble, disappointment. Don't know about that. Amen. In every situation. And the whole time, the Lord has everything under control. If we are born of the Spirit of God, if we are stable... And I probably need to explain that because the world is so unstable that most of the folks might not even know what stable is. Uh, but stable, that means that we are able to do the same thing and to function, amen, in a, a normal atmosphere in a normal way, like uh, going to work every day instead of one every now and then. I've had employees that work for me three weeks. I've had one just not long ago that worked for me three weeks. They missed five and a half days in three weeks, and they were late an hour uh, another day. 
That's all in three weeks. That's what you call unstable. Stable is missing one every now and again because you're sick or you have car trouble. Miss a day every three months or four. Not, you know, five to six days every three weeks. I mean, you're getting, uh, you're there 30% of the time. Same way by church. Amen. In and out, in and out, in and out, up and down. Amen. Uh, to be stable means that you're there and you're faithful and you pay your tithes faithfully unto the house of God. Amen. And you live a good life. You're not, you know, in church one day and so drunk you can't stand up the next. Uh, amen. Uh, and in church one time and next thing you know, you're done out with somebody else's wife. Somebody makes you mad and you quit your job, you quit church, and you get, that's unstable. I thought I would explain that. But if you're in church and you're living for the Lord and you're stable and you're faithful to Him, amen, God is going to take care of you. He has bound Himself to you. He has bound himself to me, amen, to be my heavenly father, my caretaker, if I will put my faith and my dependence wholly in him and not in the things of the world or try to work the things out myself, amen, and then to get my balloon popped when it don't go the way I think it ought to and decide I'm going to throw up my hands and quit. Amen. But to know, oh well. Went out on the porch and the porch caved in. Went out to the car and three tires were flat. Went out to the tractor and there was a hole in the tank. Went out to the barn and the cow was dead. God's got this thing. I don't know what he's going to do, but it's going to all be all right. Amen. That's the way things go sometimes. I don't like those scenarios. I don't like those situations. Unfortunately, I've been there. But you know what? When everything was said and done, he was still the king of glory. I still felt him in my heart. He was still real, and he helped me get through every situation. Amen. Praise the Lord. He knows what he's doing. When you think that you're up against it, there will be something you haven't thought of before. I remember years ago needing to trade automobiles really, really, really bad. And I mean, I didn't have any money. And I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't think of a way to make another payment because I was paying so much every month and, and so on and so forth. And I sat down and I figured every way I can figure. And I couldn't come up with a car payment. I don't care how small it was. I couldn't come up with an $80 car payment, let alone a $350 or $400 car payment. It, I mean, there just wasn't no way. And I laid down across my bed there when I lived in Allen County years ago, and I was praying, and I said, Lord, I don't know. I went over my finances. There is no way that I'm ever going to be able to do this. I can't think of a way. And the Lord told me of a way, spoke to my heart, and told me to go call uh, the man uh, that, that had that van I was looking at for sale and ask him what the cheapest price would be that I could make and then to call uh, Jerry Marsh at U.S. Bank there in Scottsville and talk to him that he was going to open the door for me. So I, I called him and got the price, and I called Jerry Marsh, and I said, I don't know why I'm calling you, Jerry, because I ain't got no money, but I need to borrow the money to get a van. He said, well, I'll give you the money. I said, well, where am I going to make the payment at? And he told me how I could make that payment. And I said, oh, hadn't thought of that before. He said, as good as your credit is and the way we've known you, it ain't no problem. He said, just go right out of check and come back in, and we'll sign the papers and fill them out. I said, well, I'll be there tomorrow. I said, well, Lord, you've done it again. 
You've been my hero. You've done it again. I never would have thought of this in a hundred years, but you done blowed my mind all over again. You've done surprised me all over again. And instead of being blue, I believe I'm going to have to dance a little. Amen. Praise the Lord. God always makes a way where there seems like there is a way. If your back is against the wall, no problem. There's a door next to you. You just hadn't seen it before. <laughs> Amen. If you live for the Lord. If you're broke, just do like I did one time. Just go to reaching in some of your suit coats. Amen. I found a $20 bill. I've told you that story several times before. Amen. There's a God that has a way. Amen. Of making a way where there seems like that there is no way. Amen. He told the disciples, you go down down to the lake, and the first fish you come to, you open your mouth, and there'll be enough money in there to pay Caesar and your way too. Amen. Praise the Lord. So they went down there. Amen. That's right. Got two for one. Amen. Got everything they had need of from a fish's mouth. How in the world did the Lord know that the first fish that they would find would have that coin in there, and it'd be a big enough coin to take care of everything because he put that coin in that fish's mouth probably a month ahead of time. Amen. And got that fish to come just at the right time. See, it's all about the timing, and it's all about living by faith. The just shall live by faith. No money, no problem. Amen. As long as you got Jesus. No health, no problem. As long as you know the healer. Amen. Got a bad relationship? No problem. The one I know will get in a bed with the one you're having trouble with. Amen. And they'll come to you and say, I'm sorry. Amen. That's the way God, amen, takes care of the things. Uh, amen. This before, it's such an honor to serve him. It's such a blessed way, amen, to live for him. When all hell assails me, amen, I shall prevail. You shall prevail. Amen. When we know, amen, the, the master of the wind, uh, amen, you don't have to worry about the hurricane. When you know, uh, amen, the master of the ship, uh, you don't have to worry about how much water you take it in. Amen. He's very well capable, amen, of taking care, amen, of a sinking ship. Amen. No problem. Amen. The Lord is nearby. So here they were, amen, uh, turning the world uh, upside down, uh, amen, causing people to believe, uh, amen. They were thinking what we've always believed uh, all of our life. Uh, it's not working now, but this new king they're talking about, it's going like wildfire. I can't get them to shut up. Uh, everybody's talking about Jesus. Uh, everybody's talking about the Holy Ghost. Uh, everybody's talking about uh, hey, God. Uh, healing them people over there. And you never could get, uh, amen, the Mosaic law to do that. The prophets uh, and, uh, down at the synagogue, uh, they ain't got power to do that. But Paul and Silas uh, just got through getting out of jail. Uh, they started singing uh, at the midnight hour. And the jailer got saved, uh, and the doors opened up, uh, and they walked out of their own accord. Amen. And next thing you know, they were healing somebody. Amen. Nothing like that ever happened uh, with the teachings of the old prophets. Uh, they're turning the world upside down. It's going like wildfire. That's all everybody's talking about. They ain't nobody got anything else on their mind. How many remembers the eclipse we had a couple of weeks ago? Can you think of one person that wasn't talking about the eclipse? Think about it real quickly. I can't think of one person that didn't say something about that eclipse coming up. Everywhere I went, in every store, every person I run across, every church member that I talked to, it was a talk. That's all there was. That's what they were doing about Jesus. Amen. They were telling it everywhere. Man, we can't believe this. The son of the most high God, they killed him, and he come back alive again three days later. I believed. I confessed that I was a sinner. I was taken down. I was baptized. Uh, the Spirit of God came all over me. And I tell you what, I'm the happiest fellow you ever seen in your life. Uh, amen. All of the, the anxiety left me. All of the fear is gone. Uh, and I've shouted. And I've cried. Uh, and I've laughed. Uh, and I've danced. Uh, and it's so good I can't stand it. And I'm telling everybody about it. It's a talk of the town. 
Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. That's what happens uh, when revival breaks out in the land. Uh, it's a whole lot bigger and better story than the eclipse. Uh, amen. You let somebody uh, find out that there's a big old uh, amount of money uh, at the lottery, and you'll have people talking about it. Amen. When there's a president's election, that's all everybody talks about. Uh, amen. But I want you to know, I want to talk about Jesus. Uh, yes, I talk about other things every now and then, but I get right back on the subject. Uh, amen. Because he's the most important thing to me. Because you know what? It don't matter who's president. Jesus is king. Uh, amen. It doesn't matter. Uh, amen. How many hurricanes? Uh, amen. Hits the coast. Uh, amen. My God's still in charge uh, of everything. Uh, amen. It doesn't matter what kind of storm comes up in life. Uh, amen. God, uh, amen, will carry us through. Uh, amen. He is my anchor. Amen. When the storm comes. Uh, amen. He is my buckler. And he is my shield. Uh, he is my banker. Amen. He's not a loan officer. He just unlocks uh, amen, the vault and gives me the money. Amen. I don't have to pay it back. That's a good thing about the God that I serve. Amen. He makes a way. Now, I'm not telling you, I'm not out here in this false teaching uh, telling you just sow seed and you're going to wind up getting a house you didn't pay for. And... Amen. I had to pay for mine. Amen. But you know what? God made a way. Uh, amen. And I've been blessed with more, amen, than I work for. Amen. I'll have to say that. There's no doubt about that. Uh, amen. God will continue to bless. Uh, there will be a way. Will there be hard times? You bet you there will be hard times. But there will be some good ones coming too. There will be some times that you think, honey, you go to Walmart, get the biggest steak that you can get in the cart. Bring that thing to the house. You go over in the candy aisle and get you, get us about five or six bags of candy. You go over and get us a whole bunch of cookies and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And if you want your dress, baby, just get you one while you're there because we done come into the money now and we're going to be able. Uh, we were suffering a while back and had to have a bag of pinto beans uh, and, and a 10-pound bag of potatoes uh, and cook couldn't even afford any meat, but today we in the money. We're going to eat high on the hog. Amen. We're going to sit up late tonight and burn the midnight oil. Amen. Everything's going to be all right. Who I'm about to shout. Have you had money come in, Brother Jimmy? I have not. Has anything big happened? No, it hadn't, but it has before. <laughs> And I ain't forgot it, amen. And I know it's going to again because of the God, amen, that I serve. Amen, I know what he can do. I know what he's done, and I know what he's going to do. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to do it, amen, because he cannot fail. He cannot lie. He is still, amen, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and we can still cry out to him, Abba, Father, and he still answers, hallelujah. Amen. Whew, I don't know if I get through to get ready for verse 7 here in a few minutes maybe. Amen. But they were turning the world uh, upside down. If our froze over backslid churches today can ever get back in love with the Lord, uh, amen, and start uh, evangelizing again, uh, amen, we'll see this happen again, uh, amen, 12 men, uh, amen, turned Israel upside down, uh, amen, with the faith that they had in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, amen, Paul and Silas, uh, amen, were, were turning uh, this area upside down. What have you done in your area lately? Do they know that you've been there? Today, uh, is there enough evidence, uh, amen, that you're a Christian to convict you? Boy, it got quiet in here. Somebody run open the door. We need a little, little oxygen in. Would you be convicted because there's enough evidence that you're a Christian and that they could put you in jail for it? Or they would look at you and say, well, I don't know. I'm a pretty good old boy, but I, I you know, I, well, I, I guess he, he says he's a Christian, or she says she's a Christian, but I don't, they smile sometimes, and uh, they, they're pretty nice, but I, uh, well, I don't know. You know what? 
We're going to be peacemakers, but you're also going to be stirring stuff up. I'm not talking about uh, picking fights. Uh, I'm talking about making changes. Uh, amen. I'm talking about telling the good news uh, of the gospel. Uh, when was the last time you got in trouble at work for inviting people to come to church? Well, I don't get in trouble because I own my own business. Amen. But I have, amen, been told before uh, not to be witnessing and, and talking about uh, church and uh, things like that. And I said, well, and I didn't. I got out of sight. <laughs> I didn't promise them I wouldn't go into I just said, well. See, that way you ain't lying. You just say, well, 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 well. Amen. Then go telling, <laughs> telling about the Lord. You got the good news. Uh, amen. Who? All right. Verse number, number seven. Whom Jason uh, hath received, and these all do contrary uh, to the degrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. Amen. So therefore they were saying there's another king. They was misunderstanding. Uh, the king they were talking about uh, was the king of the universe, uh, not the king of that country. Amen. Jesus was no threat at all to Caesar. Jesus is no threat, uh, amen, to the United States government uh, unless they persist to be crooked. Amen. And if they do, he'll elect another Donald Trump. Excuse me. Oh, I got choked. <laughs> Amen. He may put my Huckabee in office next time if they don't shut up and get right. <laughs> then they'd have some preaching in there. They think Donald Trump's rough. Get old Mike Huckabee in there. Man, he'll give them a, a good lecture. Amen. Tell them that they need to get saved. He'll tell the whole country, you're going to hell if you don't get right with God. Amen. That'd be what I would tell them. Amen. Praise the Lord. We uh, And you know what? I'm not into politics, but i tell you one thing that old Trump done. He had uh, last Sunday, this past Sunday, was a national day of prayer. Amen. Our last president canceled the National Day of Prayer, done away with it, and then honored the Muslims on their day of prayer. Fact, not fiction. Fact. Amen. So thank God. I'm not saying the man's done everything uh, and, and uh, that he's a good Christian. I don't know about that, but he sure is taken up for Christian values. Amen. Amen. All right, verse number 8. And they troubled the people. And the rulers of the city, when they heard these things, it tore them up. What in the world are we going to do about him? What are we going to do about that person? They're shaking up our denomination. They're shaking up our teaching. Amen. There was some talking about me when I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'd walk into our association that I was a member of. And I'd see them over whispering in the corner. When I'd walk up, they'd get quiet. I know they're talking about me because I come in and told them I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I was a talk of that association. He's trying to turn us into a bunch of Pentecostals. No, I wouldn't. I'm just trying to tell them what happened to me. You can have it too if you want to. You can be a Baptist and still get it. Amen. I don't care if you're church of Christ. Amen. You can get filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't care what church you go to. But they were taking it like you're going to tear up and destroy our denomination. No, I'm not out to destroy uh, your denomination. Uh, I'm trying to tell you what happened to me. You can have it too. Uh, amen. It sure, amen, made uh, my life uh, in my ministry better. Uh, amen. And, and let me go ahead and say this. In my ministry, I've probably seen 10 or 12 people saved in the past 15 years before that. That year, I had 55 saved. Amen. Don't tell me. Amen. There's not a difference. Amen. There was a big difference. And instead of people saying, wow, let us find out more about this. Amen. I even had the main man in the denomination, I mean the top dog, sit over, come over to the table and sit down beside of me and said, uh, Brother Wilson, I would like for you to fill in me on what it is that's going on in your church and how you've had the church growth. And I said, all right, just have your seat. 
and he sat down there. He wasn't there very long. He pushed the chair back and got up. Amen. So I told him exactly what happened down at the TV station when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire. And how I came back to the church, and it's like a foggy mist. Amen. was hovering over top of the congregation. And I said, I'm getting two to five saved every Sunday for the last several weeks now. He said, really? I said, yeah. And I said, people are falling out in the spirit. Looks like flies are falling out and kicking in the floor. I said, because the power of God. Amen. It's coming all over people. He said, well. He said, all right. I wish you well, Brother Wilson. And he went on to another table. He didn't say, can you come and speak to all of our churches in our denomination so we can get that? Oh, no. We'll just keep the small number that we've got and we'll be satisfied as long as you don't try to change us. Y'all ain't getting it. Amen. That's where the 98% of the people that goes to church, that's the mentality, amen, that a lot of people have. Amen. You find a church that gets on fire and starts shouting. Amen. You let, and I know this has happened. Amen. We're a pastor. We go into a dead church, and he'd be fired up, and it wouldn't be but just a few Sundays. Amen. He'd go past 12 o'clock, and people start going to the altar and repenting, and they got rid of him. Amen. And we're going to have no after 12 o'clock in that place. And they weren't going to have people running to the altar and, and, and a crying and a boo-hooing and a carrying on. You're upsetting the children and some of the old folks even. Ain't never seen nothing like that before. We need to get rid of him. Uh, amen. Because he's going to ruin our church. We're going to be spiritual. <laughs> ah! But see, that to look to, to, for them looking at it, uh, amen, they say, boy, it must be the devil doing that. How in the world could people be moved in the spirit? How it, could it be the devil? Amen, people said, uh, amen, for years, dead as a hammer, amen, and when the spirit of God goes to moving in and life starts getting ch uh, changed, they said, look what the devil's doing. He's tearing our church all to pieces. It ain't the devil doing it. It's the Lord moving. He's resurrecting, amen, the people. And it's scaring people to death because they're not used to it. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm glad that the Lord's able to touch. It troubled the people. Uh, amen. It, it, it shook them up. Uh, verse number 9. And when uh, they had taken security of Jason <laughs> and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, uh, who coming thither uh, went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So they looked into the scriptures to find out if this Jesus could be real and if he would actually have the power to do the things that they're saying that he was going to do. And the things that they're saying uh, uh, that happened, is it really in the writings of the old prophets that a bone would not be broke of his body? And that the temple would be destroyed and he would build it again in three days. They searched the scriptures to find out, could it be so? Amen. Because these were more noble than they were in Thessalonica. I want to stop here for just a moment. There's people, amen, in some areas that are more susceptible to the Word of God. Amen. There's some people, you can share the Word of God with them, and they're like, oh, man, wow. Oh, I'm going to search this out. I'm going to read this. Man, this has really stirred me. I want to find out more about this. Then you got others that's got the attitude like, you're not part of my denomination. I, I, I'm not going to listen uh, to anything. If you don't come from headquarters, uh, you're just babbling. 
I mean, it, it don't amount to nothing. Um, you don't have any authority from my denomination. I'm not going to accept that. Yesterday, I had two uh, folks in, in my office, and they were there um, as salesmen, of course, but they were there, and uh, they were talking to me, and uh, they were Church Christ. And anyway, uh, one of them uh, said to me, and, and Jimmy here has had a lot of conversations in the past, good conversations about the Lord. And they went to telling this person all about what our ministry is doing and stuff. And they said, you, you tell what all, where you're reaching and where your ministry's going. And I told what all that we were doing. And this person just kept sitting there, kept saying, wow, man, you must be a really good teacher. I said, well, I don't know about that. I'm just telling you where the ministry's going and what the Lord's done. It's not anything that I've done. They said, if you've got a website, I said, well, sure I do. I need to find out some more. I said, I'll get you a card. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to find out more about this. We'll be back in a few days, but I'm going to check your ministry out as soon as I get home. And see, there's a lot of people that won't listen. Amen. They're not interested. They don't want any more. They don't want to find out anything. They don't want to be moved by the Scripture. They don't want to learn, amen, from the Word of God. They don't want to be around the anointing of God. And there's others that are hungry, amen, for the Word of God. They want to find out uh, more about this, uh, amen. I read on Facebook this morning a young preacher uh, that I really think a lot of a real good uh, young man of God, uh, not too many miles from here, was uh, sharing uh, what he'd been reading uh, in the Word of God this morning and what he was going to be uh, reading uh, probably later tonight. Uh, he's got such a hunger for the Word of God. He's in church like I was uh, when I started out my ministry. Amen. I never missed uh, any. I was there. And, and, and when uh, we had a snow on the ground, uh, I'd find out if the church doors was open and if two or three that lived in town would open up the doors uh, I'd put wood in the back end of my truck or whatever it was I'd done to go to work and I'd slip and slide uh, and I'd go right into the church on Sunday morning six inches of snow on the ground uh, and then was saying don't get out unless you have to well I got to I got to get to church hey man if I got to go tomorrow morning to make a dollar I can go today Hey, man, and I load her up, and I go right on into the house of God. Brother Jimmy, when do you shut the doors there? At the shepherd's house, eight years. I scratch the snow away from the door if the main roads is in pretty good shape, and if I can get two or three to come in here and run a camera, we'll live stream and shout on. Amen. We'll reach as many as we can. Amen. Uh, uh, God of desire. Amen. Now, this is not about works. Uh, that's not going to make me a better Christian. But I might be able to feed somebody that normally wouldn't hear the Word of God. Uh, amen. Because they're tied up uh, in the house uh, and they can't uh, get out of the house. Uh, and they might just have to flip through the channels. Uh, amen. And hear what i got to say. Amen. So there's a, a real good chance. So we need to reach as many as we possibly can with the good news of the gospel and the excitability. They were saying, man, they're turning this place upside down. Then they come across some uh, that were more noble because they sat, uh, they listened, uh, and they searched the scriptures daily. Uh, that's why I encourage my people to bring their Bible with them. Reference uh, everything that we study here in the Word of God reference everything. Uh, amen. Get you a concordance. Uh, don't look at just one scripture, uh, but look at everything in the Word of God pertaining, uh, amen, to that subject. And if you'll do that, you can have a good study course uh, at home. There were some things, uh, and I could tell you thing after thing after thing that I had to look up, uh, amen, in the Word of God for myself. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is one of them. Amen. Whether or not a woman could preach the gospel. Amen. You look that up for yourself. I looked it up. I was surprised. Amen. What used to make me mad, now then I accept. Amen. I had to find it in the Scripture. Well, Jimmy, I still don't see it that way. You ain't looked hard enough. You like what you... If you like what you believe, why search the Scripture? Oh, it got quiet in here then. Uh-huh. Well, Brother Jimmy, 
Who in the world's like that? Look, look real hard at me right there. You see me? There's one that used to be like that. Amen. So if I'm preaching on you, get over it. You ain't no better than I am. Amen. You get in there and dig the scripture for yourself. Amen. And look up the things. Amen. You got question about and still saying, well, I just don't believe like that because I don't want to. Well, hey amen. You could believe there ain't no such thing as a coat and freeze to death out in the snow. Or you could look up the definition of a coat and then look up where you might could find one. Then head to Walmart and get you one. Hey Amen. And you. <laughs> It's the same thing with the Word of God. We need to be searching the Scripture and praying, Lord, show me, open up my eyes, touch my heart, teach me your Word. Amen. And sometimes you have to be put between a rock and a hard place. There was one thing that I had a terrible trouble with, and the Lord knew that I was going to be a hard head like some of y'all. Hey, man, except I might be a little harder-headed than some of y'all. So I got put in a position I didn't have no other choice but to search the Scripture because we was getting ready to have a church split over some folks that came to our church when some of the church people didn't believe in well like they believed. And I was going to either have to stand with them or stand against them. Now, that right there will separate the wood from the kindling. Amen. So I had to, I knew I was fixing to lose a bunch of people, and I better make sure I'm right on this. I know how I want to believe. <laughs> I know how I've always believed, and I like it. It makes perfect sense to me. But when I went to searching the Scripture, I kept saying, oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, me. And I called the assistant pastor. I said, you've been, he said, yeah. He said, you've been looking over in Luke? I said, yep. Chapter 2? I said, yep. I said, it make you mad? He said, yep. I said, it did me too. Because I've been wrong and you have too. He said, you're right. We both have been wrong. I said, yep, we have. Amen. Because we've been taught that by other people. I, and I looked into the Scripture, and I found it. i done a bunch of referencing. Amen. I went into the dictionary, looked up some things, uh, and done a whole lot of studying on it. Uh, amen. Got my notes all together. Got my proof all together. I took a stand uh, and let them that got mad and left because it, they wouldn't accept the Word of God, even though I did read it to them. They still wouldn't accept it. Well, Jimmy, you mean there's people, when you read them, the Word still won't accept it? You're absolutely right. There's a whole lot of people won't accept what's in the Scripture, even though they you can read it to them. Amen? That ain't what that means. Thou shalt not kill could mean a lot of things. So I'm going to go ahead and kill my mother-in-law. <laughs> Taste. <laughs> because you may be interpreting, thou shalt not kill. It's talking about you shouldn't kill a hog and eat it. It wasn't talking about your mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, no, no. <sighs> that's not so. Anyway, <laughs> well, that's just how carnal that people are. Amen? So here they were. They were, they were learning. Verse 12, therefore many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men. Not a few. Now, when it says not a few, that would mean many. If it's not cold, then it's hot or it's warm. <laughs> Amen. So it's not a few. It had to be many. I don't know how many it was, but there were women and there were men both. Amen. And there's a whole lot of things in the Word of God that we can see because of tradition and because of people taking Scripture out of context and because of teachings, amen, that's went on for years, amen, where people have saw some things that's not been exactly right, amen, but they accepted it, and not only did they accept it, they defended it with every ounce of strength that's within them, but they don't double-check and make sure they're right before that they argue.
this stuff. And I've had some people try to argue some stuff with me in the past, and I would just, you know, I'd say, you know what, we're just going to have to agree to disagree on this because, it's, I mean, it's right here in the Scripture, and if I can't get through to you, then I'm sorry. And if you choose to believe the way you want to, There's nothing that I can do. But you can't make me go back and believe something that I've done found, uh, that I've read uh, for myself. Uh, amen. There's all kinds of doctrines and teachings out there that people will defend with every ounce of strength that's within them, and they have absolutely no doctrinal basis at all, and they have no Scripture to back up and support because when they take the Scripture in context instead of out of context, the way that it is, uh, amen, they would see then uh, the the truth, uh, amen, about the situation. There's been a lot of things, uh, amen, that I had in my mind and some things that I was taught uh, that I knew that was not right. Amen. It didn't feel right. I, and I remember... Uh, an old preacher, uh, not too long after that I got saved I, and got called, the Lord called me to preach, I started preaching, and he ran across me there in Scottsville, Kentucky, and he said, well, I've heard some good news. I heard that the Lord's called you to preach. I said, yeah, and he said, I've been hearing that you are a fireball. I said, well, I don't know about that. He said, man, I've been hearing some good things about you. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. And he said, now this is what you need to do, young man. You need to get out of that association that you're in with a bunch of them old divorcees that's ordained, that's been married before, and get into one that ain't got all of that. When he said that, it ran all over me. Now, I've not been married before, and my wife hadn't either. So there was no reason for it to make me mad because it don't affect me. Amen? How many of y'all are robbed a bank? None of you? So if I called somebody a bank robber, he wouldn't offend you, would he? Okay, you understand what I'm saying. So it didn't, it didn't affect me, so I wouldn't be, uh, be in, but what I couldn't understand is, is why can't God forgive? If he forgives us of all sins, then why don't he forgive us of all sins? If he's going to forgive us of all sins, and I got to studying, there's only one unpardonable sin, and it's not being divorced, even though, it's not right to divorce. Any y'all ever steal a pencil? Any y'all ever say a dirty word? That wasn't right either. Any any y'all fail to pray? Hey man, that's that's not right either. Uh, there's a whole lot of things that's not right. I said, man, it don't make no sense. How that somebody uh, uh, could, uh, could uh, this is not making any sense. It didn't feel right. I went home and I studied and studied and studied, and I said that old boy means well, but that's uh, th there's no scripture to back that up. That's not the unpardonable sin, and he ought not to be putting down uh, preachers uh, because that they had a previous marriage uh, when they were young. And I said the thing I can't understand is here's brother so and so, and this brother over here. And both of them are heavy, anointed men of God, and both of them can preach circles around this man. And they've both been married before. And if they're such a devil and they can't get forgiveness, how come the Lord's using them in all that sin they're living in and he won't anoint him and he ain't got that sin? Amen. It just don't add up. So it must be that they're under grace, and it must be that they got forgiveness of their sins, and God washed away all their sins. So I went to studying the Scripture, amen, and, and doing some research, and I found out, wow, man, they've been, this, this guy and some more has been warped. That adultery is definitely wrong. But you can get forgiveness for anything. It don't matter what it is. Amen. Don't matter what it is. And I'm against any, so if any of y'all goes get a divorce, I'll be against it. Amen. Unless your husband is a bum and he's beating you half to death, you've got to get away from him. Or if he's took off with some little short skirt, amen, then uh, that's a different story. But what I'm talking about is, boy, I didn't mean to get into this. <laughs> And some of y'all that are mad at your husband, no, you can't get rid of him. It'll be a sin. You'll go to hell for that. You need to repent. Uh, amen. I'm just saying to death to his part means to death to his part. But and if while you were in sin, before you knew God, 
I'm not talking about two churchgoers that's supposed to be full of the Spirit that can't get along and jumps up and sides a divorce. That's not what I'm talking about. That's wrong. Amen? Amen. That's wrong. Amen. But if you are living in sin, uh, amen, and you married because of lust, uh, and you didn't go, go to church and know anything about God, and you went along with what the rest of the world did, and you got uh, uh, divorced, uh, and then years later you got saved, uh, got in church, and found you a good wife, or found you a good husband, and now then you're living for God. Thank God your sins uh, has been cast as far as the east is from the west to never be remembered against you anymore and you're just as clean as anybody else. Amen. Preacher or no preacher. Boy, I wouldn't aim to get into that, but evidently there's some reason why I had to get into that. Brother Jimmy, I disagree with you. You don't disagree with me. You disagree with Scripture. Amen. Because how can you say God will forgive, but God can't forgive? But God forgives, but God can't forgive. But He forgives. Talking out of both corners of their mouth. Amen. You can't, God can't forgive and not forgive at the same time. Amen. And the only unpardonable sin is blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. Anything else you can be forgiven, what the Bible says, right? You can get forgiveness except for blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. Amen. And blaspheming against the Holy Ghost is to deny and or to speak out publicly against the Holy Ghost. That's what blasphemy means. I wasn't aiming to get into all of that, but I've had somebody call me uh, a couple of times down through the years and told me that uh, they had failed the Lord and the Lord told them to go witness to um, this lost person in their family and they didn't go and they were scared to death that they had blasphemed. I said, no, 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 no. That's, you were disobedient. Uh, no doubt the Lord spanked you. And I said, oh, you don't know how he spanked me for that. I said, well, he'll spank you for it, but then you can get right back up on your feet and go on after you repent. Well, I've just been beat myself into the ground all these years. And I said, you've let the devil beat you into the ground. It's what's happened. That's not blaspheming. You just cry out to the Lord. So I had prayer with them over the phone, and they felt so much better. And I said, thank you, Lord. I helped one to understand that blaspheming against the Holy Ghost is not failing the Lord. If that was so, there would nobody make it to heaven. We've all failed the Lord at one time or another. Whew. Now, don't ask me how I got off on all of this. You just talk to the Lord, because I, I sure hadn't planned on it. Amen, but it worked right in. Anyhow, I'm not going to get the pull of surprise. I'll make probably half the country mad, but you'll get over it. You take you two aspirin and pray, amen, and see if the Holy Spirit don't tell you the same thing that he tells me. Amen. Don't sin, but if you do, get it behind you and don't do it no more. Amen. The church folks don't need to be speaking out against God and the church folks, and, the, and if you're really saved, you, you're not going to. You would have to be someone that got backslid and got out of the will of God and got bitter and over a period of time lost their faith and turned on God in order to do something like that. Amen. A person that speaks out against God to start out with, uh, there's a lot of people spoke out against God because they didn't know him. But after you know him, it's a whole other situation. And if you're in church and you're married, it's to death do us part. Don't you ever let the devil tell you you've got a reason and excuse to divorce. There's not one if you're a Christian. There's not one. If you're a lost person, you've done it because you didn't know any better. If you're in church... And you're going somewhere where you got a pastor that's like me that ain't got no more sense but to teach you the whole Bible. You, you'll know that you're not supposed to divorce and that you're supposed to marry because of being led of the Holy Spirit and seeking out values and not following lust in the first place. And then a family that prays together is a family that will stay together. I had to get myself out of that rut I got into tonight. I sure did get myself in some knee-deep stuff tonight. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. Amen. And we need to 
move up to the Word of God. We'll pick up with verse 13. Thank you. I didn't have to put my glasses back on. Verse 13. Next time. You folks watching by live streaming, uh, if you're brave enough, share this with other people on Facebook. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you and good night.